Number six. What is the steel thickness range for light gauge cold rolled metal framing? So this is uh, when you're using metal studs, metal joists, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's not structural steel, which would be wide flanges and, and channels and things like that. This is those kind of very thin uh, uh, folded forms that make up uh, the metal studs. Um, and first thing to say is rather oddly, uh, I think oddly, the way that you refer to the thickness is through the idea of gauge. And the larger the number, actually the thinner the metal is. The, the smaller the number, the thicker the metal is. And so I find that sounds kind of backwards, so it always bothers me when I, when I look at it. But as long as you kind of remember that, you'll be fine. Um, and the answer here uh, is that the range is actually A, 30 gauge to 8 gauge. So what this is talking about is 30 gauge is really thin metal. That's, um, that's uh, I, I always joke around about it on sites that that's like folding uh, tin foil uh, and then hoping that it'll work as a stud. Um, there are certain things that that's gonna be good enough for and you might as well go with something that's thin and light if it's not necessary for it to be thicker and heavier. Um, if you get down to an eight gauge, like I actually have never even used an eight gauge. Um, uh, I think the strong, the, the thickest I've ever used on any of my projects is probably a 12 gauge, I think, maybe a 10 gauge. Um, uh, that's actually pretty thick. It's not as thick as a structural steel member, but it's actually getting pretty, pretty solid. Um, and so the range here is, there's gonna be a huge number of times when you're doing an interior layout change, and there's a simple partition, and it's not really, it's just sort of between the floor and the ceiling, and doesn't really carry anything other than the drywall. Uh, you know, that might be a 24 gauge or something along those lines. Like, you know, like pretty light scale, um, cheaper, easier to carry around, doesn't take as much uh, gas on the truck to carry it from one place to another. You know, it's very, very lightweight and very easy and does the job just fine. Um, kind of intriguingly, it actually uses the drywall as part of its structure, which is a little weird. Um, but that's, uh, that's how it gains its, its uh, um, stiffness. Um, but if I'm doing something where it's actually a load-bearing wall or it's a stiffener for uh, the overall structural setup, I'm definitely going to want to have something that's going to be thicker than that, um, something that's going to have a little bit more robust of a, of a um, capacity. And so that's when I'm going to get down closer to 16, 14, 12. And really when I start getting into like actual, you know, really bearing walls, I'm really talking about 12s and 10s and that kind of range. And I guess 8s, like I say, I've never actually used one. But, but that would be the range of how these things go. Um, it's very, very rough justice. It's not actually accurate, so don't take this as, uh, as gospel or anything. But you can kind of think of the sizes as uh, a 30 gauge is sort of um, roughly 1 30th of an inch, um, and an 8 gauge would be roughly 1 8th of an inch, although it's actually thinner than that. But it just kind of gives you kind of a, a a rough idea of the kind of range that we're talking about. Uh, and obviously when you look at that, that's a lot different, right? Those are, you know, that's a, that's a, a lot of steel, a lot of weight, uh, a lot of uh, cost difference. Um, and also, you know, uh, clearly if I started putting, uh, a, you know, any reasonable heavy load on a, a 30 or 24 gauge uh, steel, it's gonna buckle. Um, if I start doing it on one of these thicker ones, like a, a 12 or a 10, the material itself is thick enough that it's gonna, it's gonna be, get much, much harder for it to buckle. And then the other thing that makes it not buckle um, is that it's folded into a shape, right? Um, that the strength actually comes from the folds, right? So it's gonna look something like that. Let's see there, how's that for, yeah, that's about right. Um, and uh, the sheer fact that this is uh, cold rolled uh, means that it's been recycled usually, not always, but I think something like 92% or something like that of these things are recycled old car parts. Be interesting to see what happens as their cars get more and more plastic, um, <laughs> what, where we're going to get our steel studs from. But uh, they're generally old recycled pieces that get uh, heated up, uh, melted down, uh, laid flat into giant sheets, cut um, uh, with stampers, and then folded. And the fact of the folding actually gives it strength. And that's why it has these double folds. And then they stamp out holes so that there's the ability to have pipes go through um, without having to drill anything. Uh, the studs are like that. The 
um, bottoms, the runners, are actually going to look more without the second fold. It's just going to be the one fold. Um, uh, and that's so that these uh, can fit in between uh, and then you can screw them together um, uh, into the runner. So they lay the runners down and then you fit these things in and then you add the drywall and it all starts very flimsy and by the time you have it all together it's actually pretty darn, pretty darn solid. So it's kind of an amazing, um, uh, very simple, very engineered down process. Uh, the fact that it's cold rolled really refers to sort of the specifics of uh, the way that it's made, but also has structural implication. Um, a hot rolled uh, would be more of a structural steel situation, and that structural steel um, is going to be thicker materials, and the only real way that you can easily do it on mass scale is by, by doing it hot rolled, and you're getting these uh, much more complicated uh, shapes, the, uh, and that's going to be beneficial to the ductility of that steel. This is going to be uh, less ductile. The reason it gets its ductility is just because it's thin, but you're trying to make it as stiff as possible out of a very thin um, amount of material. So you're, getting, you're using the structural capacity of the cold versus the hot and the, the folds versus the shapes. Um, you're finding the ways that those different structural capacities are actually helpful to the specific task at hand. Hope that made sense. All right. We, Quick question here. We do have a couple of questions here. Um, so Michael is asking, is this differentiating uh, LGMF from framing studs, Division 5 versus Division 9 studs? Yeah, the whole, all of those together would be, would be in the 30 to the 8 range. Um, it's kind of putting them all in one thing. Okay, and then Jordan is asking, you know, can you leave it uh, to the contractor and the general requirements of a CD set you know, for interior partition walls, for example? Um, it depends on the kind of thing you're doing. If you're talking about interior partitions, um, like most buildings, if you're working in a bigger building, a bigger office building, there's probably like a set way that they do it. Uh, so they'll just go with that set way. And that, that's, you don't really need a structural engineer or anything like that to figure that out. Um, but I was actually just today um, at uh, doing a walkthrough with a uh, friend of mine who has a, a, new, uh, a new kitchen structure. And it's in a bigger building. And they were talking about how the... Um, landlord developer went in and put in uh, a demising wall using 16s, uh, 16 gauge uh, studs, and that kind of makes sense in the world of demising walls, and that was great uh, until they realized that they were actually doing a mezzanine and they were going to be using that wall as a structural wall, at which point they had to be 12s, and there was a whole discussion that the landlord hadn't looked at the drawings and the architects had put 12, 12s in the drawings because they knew the mezzanine was coming, but the landlord was just kind of doing the thing they always do and put in the 16s, and it didn't meet the structural capacity that they needed to be able to hold the floor up uh, use it because it wasn't just a partition anymore, even though it was a fire-rated partition. It wasn't just a fire-rated partition. It was also a structural wall. So that's the, the trouble with letting just kind of the, the folks do what they always do is that if you don't think it through at least, you may find that there are spots where that's just not true and you really do need to be very careful about uh, uh, which, which elements need to be in this, these thicker, more robust ranges. Mm -hmm.